try and fail, I tried and fail, no, how I tried and how I failed. Well, good morning, John. Where are you walking off to? Okay, well, I guess you don't get to be part of this then, do you? Look at you over there. What a weirdo. Anyway, guys, I was just sitting here getting ready to drink my coffee. First thing in the morning. And I got a package delivered. My new Pumas. Now let's see how those look with these. These will replace the ones that I wore in Vispi, Reykjavik, Budapest. Dun, 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 The, uh, the box doesn't make that music. That was me. Metallic Pumas. And I'm gonna throw in some blue laces. Not bad. Well, those are my options. There's the blue, there's the silver laces. I think I'll go with the blue. And I think I might actually wear them to the uh, Venice Film Festival this weekend. Now I'm on the search for a new date because uh, the girl I was seeing, we're not seeing each other anymore. And she decided not to go to the event with me, so I got a few text messages out to see if anybody else wants to be my date. Wah, wah. Well, and just like that, my friend Brittany hit me up and said, I will change my plans and I will be your date. So now I have a date for the film festival. Everything works out when you need it to, I guess. Well, I'd definitely be lying if I said I wasn't bummed about the way this whole, like, scenario for tomorrow is shaken out. I honestly did not expect uh, it to go weird today and I guess once you realize somebody's not going to make any compromises that's just like a sign of things to come so it's probably better to end it now. Now I actually don't know what we're going to vlog today because my plan was to vlog something in Orange County but I'm not going to be in Orange County today so we'll look around. I have a whole handful of things that I can do around here. It's just the few times that I set my mind to what I really want to do, I hate when it gets derailed, so I'm going to look through my list. I want to make it extra special today. Where's my dog? Jaw! Well, I keep calling it the Venice Film Festival, and then I just realized on the uh, paperwork that it actually says the other Venice Film Festival, because if you type in Venice Film Festival, you find out that the oldest film festival in the world is in Venice, Italy. So they call this one the other Venice. The Venice, California one. <laughs> Sorry about the confusion if you're looking up anything. Well, gang, I think I figured out what I'm going to go vlog today. This is one I've had on the docket for quite a while, and for some reason it just seemed so overwhelming to me that I wanted to wait, and um, I don't know, today's the day. Today I'm going to head over to West Hollywood, and I'm going to show you something that used to be owned by someone you'd never expect, inhabited by people that you're like, what, really? Oh yeah, let's take our little field trip to West Hollywood, Santa Monica Boulevard. I don't know who's in front of us, but it's a deep car. For those of you wondering why I don't do more Brentwood and Malibu, I'm only going less than four miles today for this vlog, and it took me 23 minutes by GPS. Well, we've pretty much made it, and they actually have raised the building since the original was here, but when they rebuilt it, it pretty much has the same layout as it did before. How fitting it would be on Route 66. Well, here it is. Now it's the West Hollywood Ramada, but at one point it was known as the Tropicana Motel up until 1988 when they raised this building. And its fourth owner in the early 60s was Dodger Heavyweight and quite possibly who my grandfather and Vin Scully both call the greatest pitcher they've ever seen. Sandy Koufax bought this and named it Sandy Koufax Tropicana Motel. Now it wasn't your ritzy motel that you might, and I know that's kind of funny even thinking of a motel, but you'd think with the name Sandy Koufax attached to it, it'd be this really nice place, but it was actually just a, pretty much a $30 a night hotel or motel. And Sandy invested his money in this because back in those days, even though they did make pretty good money for the time, it was nothing like what you made now. So this was more of a financial investment for Sandy for the days when he would call it quits. And shortly therein after he sold it in 1968, it became known as basically a rock and roll crash house. Since it was right down the street, which would be down there from the Troubadour, 
And just a few blocks away down here from Barney's Beanery, in the late 60s, early 70s, throughout the whole 70s, you could have found Bob Marley, the Mamas and the Papas, Led Zeppelin, when Jim Morrison couldn't get his room down here because the, uh, the Doors recording facility was right over there at the time, he'd crash here. Now some of the more notable famous people that stayed here that kind of are synonymous with this place when you find the locals that remember it is people like Joan Jett, Iggy Pop, and longtime resident Tom Waits. And kind of from this angle right here, you could have seen the old postcard. That would have been sort of the entryway right here. And Tom Waits actually lived here for quite a while. He said he moved in in the early 70s and he said the reason he stayed here was because he really wanted to live out that rock and roll lifestyle. He said I was on the road so much that staying in motels and hotels just seemed like they pretty much felt like home at that time. So this became his kind of quasi permanent residence for that whole time period. In fact, he had a bungalow in the very back and they said that without permission he decided to move in a piano and would write songs basically all night long. Now this place was synonymous for overdoses, murders, suicides, tourists, because they said since it was such a kind of a low cost place, the tourists would stay here not knowing that it was like a rock and roll haven and they might be partying next door to Iggy Pop all night and they said that because of the old plumbing here, the place would very often um, flood and so a lot of the times they'd get calls from rock stars that had flooded their entire place throwing parties and there's actually some pretty famous photos of Joan Jett in her room here, Johnny Ramone inside of the pool in the back and actually a postcard that used to be right behind this building when they had the pool and they very well may still have a pool here but of Sandy Koufax displaying himself right on the staircase. Now right here in front where this Wells Fargo is was a Duke's Eatery. It was basically a low cost diner that everybody would basically come here to have their burgers and have a cheap meal. But you could come here at any time and find just about any rock star that was in popular in that day. Like I said, Jimi Hendrix, Bob Marley, all those people. All the way up until 1988. And they said that this, this Ramada only had, well at the time, like I said, it was the Tropicana, they only had one pay phone. And so everybody knew to get their calls, people that were staying here would get all their phone calls here. So they said sometimes there would be like a line of people waiting for a phone call or even uh, they would be making their calls to Rodney on the Rock, Rodney Bingenheimer, who was like one of the most influential DJs in Los Angeles history. They would call him collect from here, asking him to play their songs or various things like that. Now they actually say that sitting right by this pool in the 70s was Stevie Nicks and Lindsey Buckingham the day they got the phone call that they were getting a recording contract. Now it's kind of crazy to think um, all those people would have been here and that they've raised that building. But one of the things they said was like, like I said, Tom Waits moved that piano in here without anybody's permission and they just kind of seemed to let it fly because he lived here so long. But Ricky Lee Jones actually was said to have written a few of few of the greatest songs here on Tom's piano. And there it was. At one point you could have driven by here and instead of those trees you would have seen palm trees and a sign that said Sandy Koufax Tropicana Motel. Sandy Koufax was actually kind of a pioneer when it came to investing into businesses. A friend of mine who lived in the valley when Sandy was a pitcher said that 
He also um, would frequent and owned a barber shop in the valley. He also owned a, uh, a bar that whenever you'd go in there, you would always see some former Dodgers because they would always feel at home in Sandy's bar. Now let's hit this Trader Joe's over here. I don't think I've ever seen a Trader Joe's this empty. I love it. All right, we are done. Got a salad and a sandwich for the weekend. Hey, Ja, I just had a brilliant idea. Would you like to go for a walk and go to Tailwaggers and get a rib bone? Let's go get a rib bone. Come on, bud. Let's go for a walk. Shake it out. Are you going to shake? So since I decided I'm going to wear these shoes for the, uh, the film festival, and I'm going to wear that shirt and my uh, blue suit jacket behind it, I'm thinking maybe a, uh, a chrome silver tie. I might go over to Ross, the discount store, and see if I can find one over there. Well, there it is. Jaws Little Heaven. This is his new favorite thing right there. That's what we're going to get him. The beggar. I once filmed a music video here and I was walking by and I saw they have a little homage to the people that have died this year. It's so cool. So good on them. My friend Ari Shafir is always talking about these. They're like an Australian um, candy or cookie type thing. And for some reason, the 99 cent stores in Los Angeles happen to have them right now. So I decided to get a few. And the 99 cent store actually has this kind of version. These are actually pretty good too. I had some yesterday. And uh, I am really nervous about tomorrow, guys. Even though it's not like a real competition or anything, it's just weird knowing that um, a bunch of people who are like professionals in that industry are going to be... Uh, viewing my video and making judgment on it. Well, good evening, Lionhearts. I'm going to call it a day. Had a pretty boring and actually a pretty depressing day. I uh, woke up by finding out I didn't have a date for the festival, and then I also found out that uh, Ralphie May, comedian who uh, was really nice to me many times that I met him out in Los Angeles here, um, I heard that he passed away. So this was a real depressing day for me. I um, I hope tomorrow's better. Have a great night, and I'll see y'all tomorrow. Goodbye.